Another disappointing early exit for Baltimore, but let's look ahead to the 2025 Orioles. Chris Graham here, Augusta Free Press. So first to review, Baltimore was sitting at 45 and 22 on June 12th, uh, on pace for 109 wins. Um, but as the trade deadline approached, the team had started struggling, got, had gone through an extended down period, and there were obvious needs to address, starting pitching being one with some injuries, key injuries, bullpen depth being another, maybe another bat, maybe two bats. Now, GM Mike Elias, uh, as he did at the trade deadline last year, decided to play conservatively uh, with an out of the future. We'll you know, decide later on, probably a few years from now, the wisdom of that move. He did go out and get Zach Elf Elfin, um, and Zach went 5-2 and two with a 2 ERA and 9 appearances and 7 starts in Baltimore. So that one worked out. He didn't have to give up much to get Elfin either from Tampa Bay. Um, he gave up a lot, surprisingly, for... Trevor Rogers, who even on paper was, you know, at the time from Miami, uh, was a head scratcher. Uh, he gave up Connor Norby and Kyle Stowers, two guys who got who have bats, uh, that to, to get a guy who eventually he only started four games, did Rogers. 0 and 2, 7 11 ERA, got sent down to triple A. <laughs> so you gave up two of your top prospects for a guy who finished the season in Norfolk. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. The bullpen issues never got resolved. Um, you know. Losing Felix Bautista to the late season arm injury last year. He had to have Tommy John surgery. You knew he was going to be out all this year. The O's went out and picked up uh, Craig Kimbrell, who started out fine, uh, ended up uh, being demoted from being the closer. He had 22 saves, but got demoted, um, ended up getting released. He blew six saves this season, had a 5-3-3 five, five, uh, five, ERA. That didn't work out. Um, Elias picked up Sir Anthony Dominguez and Gregory Soto from Philadelphia. Dominguez had decent numbers. He had 10 saves, 0 and 2, 397 ERA in 25 appearances. And Gregory Soto had a 1 1 and 1 record, 509 ERA in 23 appearances. That's not locking down things in the back end, though. That's just that's reality. Um, they had to give up Austin Hayes to get there. Hayes hit 256 for, for Philadelphia. So, you know, two homers and 80 plate appearances as a as an extra bat for them. Um, the extra bats that Elias landed, uh, giving away some prospects to get Eloy Jimenez, who hit 232 with one homer and 100 plate appearances, and Austin Slater, 246 with one homer and 79 plate appearances. So didn't pick up a bat, didn't really fix the bullpen. One of the two starters worked out great. The other didn't work out at all. Um, and the goal, again, for for uh, Elias seemed to be, and you know, whatever, the wisdom of this, again, will be decided in the future, but it was to keep the stock farm system as intact as possible. Um, that out of the future, we'll see if it pays off. Um, you know, I've been a fan and followed the Washington Nationals for a long, long time. I remember in 2012, the Nationals uh, decided to to sit down Steven Strasburg. Uh, this previous season, he had a surgery, and so the decision was made, hey, let's, let's limit his innings this year. We'll be around for a while. We'll have chances to win, you know, going down the road. Um, now, and the Nats, that Nats group did. Uh, they didn't win in the playoffs in 2012. They got back in 2014, got knocked out in the first round. Went back in, what was it 2016, got knocked out in the first round. 2017, got knocked out in the first round. Eventually in 2019, did win. That was the last hurrah for the group that Strasburg had helped head up dating back to 2012. But that is eight, basically eight years later, seven, seven years later, eight, the eighth season of that group. Um, and, and that team had to rally back from a 19 and 31 start to make the playoffs as a wild card, had to rally in the one wild card game back then wild card games were, it was a one, one game round, um, it had to rally in the eighth inning to get to the next round. I mean, things had to work out perfectly for that group to get its one championship. So windows open and close really quickly uh, is, is a lesson from that, you know, and there's lots of lessons there from other, other teams and other franchises. Uh, the bottom line, the trade deadline came and went on July 31st with the Orioles sitting at 65 and 44, a half game up on the New York Yankees. Uh, the O's went 20 and 22 after that, fell three games behind in the final standings to the Yankees, ended up as a wild card, and then got knocked out uh, in the wild card round in a two-game sweep. So Baltimore was the feel-good story for last year, 2023, going from 100 and, what, 110 losses in 2021 uh, to winning the division last year with 101 wins. This year's feel good story have how quickly you can come back from a hundred plus loss season. Kansas City lost 106 last year. Uh 86 wins this year, wild card, and now they've upset the the O's and they're playing in the uh, NLDS uh coming up here what tomorrow, I think. 
Um, and the way they did it was frustrating for Rose fans. A one nothing win for the Royals in Game 1 on Tuesday, 2-1 to one win on Wednesday. So the O's just get one run in 18 innings. Um, a solo homer from Cedric Mullins leading off the bottom of the fifth. After he hit that solo homer leading things off, the O's loaded the bases with nobody out, could not score with their dudes coming up. Anthony Santander, infield pop-up. Jordan Westbrook struck out on a ball that actually hit him. And then Adley Rutschman, who really struggled this season uh, down the stretch, grounded out weekly. Um, and the O's were only able to get two base runners the rest of the game. There was a two-out walk to Westbrook in the seventh, two-out single by Slater in the eighth. Uh, just could not get things together. And the fizzle out there was a continuation of a disturbing trend for the uh, O's and O's fans. Uh, Baltimore was 17th in MLB and OPS in the last month, in the month of September, and 21st in runs per game, 3.6 runs per game in the month of September. Um, and most concerning was the free fall from Rutschman, the number uh, the number one draft pick, uh, first draft pick of the Elias era back in 2019. Uh, he hit just after the All-Star break, uh, just 207 with uh, 282 on base, 303. Uh, slugging, so that's a 585 OPS. Uh, three homers, 20 RBIs, and 208 plate appearances after the break. He finished up with a one for eight uh, with one single and two strikeouts in the postseason. Um, so where things start going forward? Uh, you have to wonder if Rutschman, who's only 26 um, and three years into his MLB career, might already be experiencing the decline that you see from catchers. I mean, every great catcher you can think of, uh, most recent Joe Maurer and he rode into the Hall of Fame, but his career started making a turn at around the age of 28, um, where you, his numbers went down. The Twins eventually tried to move him to first base, and it was already too late. You know, catching is the most demanding position in baseball, maybe in all of sports, with all the crouching you have to do, the foul balls, the nicks, the you know, blocking the plate on, on pitches in the dirt and that kind of thing. And their careers just, you know, you you see guys have you know good numbers, and then all of a sudden they fall off a cliff. Everybody can't think of anybody who who that didn't happen to. Um, and so hopefully that's not the case. Maybe there was just some injury undisclosed and 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 to Rutschman's credit, he played through it this season. And once he gets a chance to get some rest and rehab, you know, he'll be back to full strength next year. If not, uh Samuel Basalo, uh, the number nine prospect in all of minor league baseball, is waiting in the wings at AAA. Uh hit 278 this year with a let's see, the numbers on that. 790 OPS with 19 homers, and he's a great defensive catcher. Uh, he was he finished the season at AAA. Um, Basalo was one of uh, the untouchables for Elias at the deadline. Um, the Rutschman struggles might also show the wisdom in what I thought at the time was a curious move uh, for the O's to draft uh, UVA catcher Ethan Anderson in the second round. I mean, I've loved it from the UVA perspective. I've got an Ethan Anderson jersey hanging up over here in my my podcast studio. Uh, but uh, yeah, with with two guys ahead of him, Rutschman and, and Basalo, I was wondering about Anderson. Maybe Anderson now works his way up a little quicker. He, he finished the season at high A, and he's the number thirteen prospect in the new system after just two months. Um, and since I mentioned that, I'll mention that Griffo Farrell, who was picked in the first round this year from UVA, the shortstop by the O's, finished as the O's number seven uh, overall prospect this year. So. Um, with a second straight early playoff exit fresh in our minds, I think we can still say the Orioles are in the midst of the rebuild. The rebuild started in 2019. You had a couple of 100 loss seasons sandwiched around the uh, the the strike uh, the um, co- strike shortened season, COVID shortened season in 2020. Um, I think I think this is the last year of the rebuild. Though next year we we transition from all right, this is a young team to all right, they they're expected to win. Um, and let's look at the results of the rebuild. There's a the everyday lineup is stacked. Pitching staff, not so much, but the everyday lineup is stacked. You got Rutschman, you got Gunnar Henderson, who had 37 homers this year, won the rookie of the year last year. He's a shortstop. Uh, you got Jordan Westberg, who was um uh 2024 all-star in his second MLB season. You got Colton Kowser, a top contender for the AL rookie of the year. He probably won't win, but he's gonna be one of the top three vote getters for rookie of the year. You got Jackson Holiday, the 2022 number one overall pick, who Struggled at the big league level, but he's going to be a he's going to be a stud. He's going to be a dude. Um, the area lacking in the rebuild is in pitching. Uh, Elias inherited Grayson Rodriguez. He was a 2018 first round pick, uh, so that's before Elias took over. Uh, in his second MLB season, uh, Rodriguez was putting up some good numbers: thirteen and four, three eight. Uh, what was it? Three eight uh, six ERA. Then he got hurt, uh, right lat injury in early August, didn't pitch again after August 4th, I think it was. 
um, that's it in terms of pitching development. Uh, to to get to flush things out this year, uh, Ely has traded two of his top prospects, Joey Ortiz, who started and played 142 games at shortstop as a rookie this year for Milwaukee, still playing in the playoffs as we're talking right now. Uh, hit 239 with 11 homers this year. He also had to give up left-handed pitcher uh, D.L. Hall. Hall didn't have a great season, one and two. I think it was like nine starts, 502 ERA for Milwaukee this season. But that was to get a one-year rental of former Cy Young Award winner Corbin Burns. Now, Burns had the season, you'd expect, 15-9 and nine record, 292 ERA, uh, but he's a one-year rental. He's, he's going to be a free agent. In fact, he is now that the season's over, I guess, for the O's. He's a free agent now. And he's expected to command in the two hundred million dollar plus range. I'm not sure the O's are going to put that kind of money into a guy who's going to be in his age thirty season next year. So uh, you trade a couple prospects for for one guy. That's implying that you thought this year you you know get a little further than you did. <laughs> and he did his job in game one. He gave up one run, pitched in the ninth inning. Just the offense couldn't put anything together. Um, another guy headed to free agency, likely headed to free agency, is Anthony Santander. Hit just 235. His OPS, though, was 814. For reference, um, I did some research on this last year. Uh, my w- What I found was the the equivalent for, you know, we always used to hold 300 batting average as a standard. That's a good batting average. The equivalent of a 300 batting average is an 845 OPS. Um, so he had an 814 OPS. Great numbers there. 44 homers. That also stands out this year for Santander. Um, Santander... Looks like he's probably going to go away. Now, uh, looking ahead, Heston Kerstad, first-round pick in 2020, probably a good guy to play in right field in place of Santander. Um, I would, I'm would i projecting Kobe Mayo, who played third base and first base uh, on his way up through the system, uh, the O system. He'll probably he, – he was getting some work in the outfield uh, in September. Um, he's, uh, he's going to be your left fielder, I think, next year. Um, the center fielder is probably going to be Kalzer. He'll move over from left. Uh, I don't foresee a future for Cedric Mullins after this year for the O's. Uh, first base, Ryan Mountcastle probably does come back. Uh, he's still got team control. Um, Holiday at second base, Henderson at uh, shortstop, Westberg at third base. So your your lineup is set. Uh, and then Rutschman at catcher or Brasalo at catcher, right? Um, your big question is starting pitching. Rodriguez as your ace. Uh, and then not much behind him. Uh, and then the goal is to have Bautista back next year. Bautista had an eight and two record, thirty three saves, one four eight ERA in twenty twenty three. Most guys come back from Tommy John, uh, and and are, are healthy and you know that kind of thing. So, assuming you got that, you have to build a couple guys in front of him, set up guys. Yenny or Cano seemed to bog down with the workload this year. He was a great setup man last year, all star himself last year. But to reinforce, I guess, as we're concluding here, the 2025 season is going to be an important one for the rebuild because I think the rebuild ends when we get to spring training next year. You can no longer say this is a young team. Um, this is a team now coming off back-to-back playoff appearances um, and early exits. And so, you know, at this point, there's no more excuses. Uh, you're not a young team on the rise anymore. You're just a team. And you got a lot of you got a lot of guys. I mean, I look at this lineup and I start thinking about, you know, some of those 70s teams when I was just a little kid. You know, the teams that had Eddie Murray, um, gosh, you know, uh, eventually, you know, the 83 championship team um, with Cal Ripken Jr., uh, you know, got everyday guys to build around. It doesn't have the pitching staff those 70s teams did in particular, the year one year with four 20-game winners. That's going to be the problem. Um, the pitching is 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 not there. And, it's, and there's nothing in the minor league suggesting that there's guys ready to come up uh, either. So uh, if uh, – Elise is going to deal with that. He may have to be willing to part with some guys uh, in his minor league system that he wasn't willing to part with this year. Um, or, or sign a free agent, go, go hard after Burns, go hard after some other guy, but you may have to go hard after a couple guys. You, you know, I don't know if you can rely on Rodriguez to be your ace, your number one guy. Uh, I love him as a number two guy. So maybe you you do make a hard press for Burns uh, to come back as number one. You probably still need to make a press for a, th- a third guy. Um, with all the injuries that you saw, um, you know, and the other rotation guys from this year, uh, Dean Kramer comes to mind, uh, as a guy who Kyle Bradish, I mean, there's, there's guys with potential. Um, John Means is a free agent after this year. Uh, he's, you know, been up and down with injuries the last few years. So, uh, there's work to do. 
there's work to do. And it's disappointing to see the team in this way after 101 wins last year, after the 45 and 22 start portending another 100 win season to see it uh, implode the way it did. But um, there's a great everyday lineup, built some pitching. Next year's a big year for Elias and the group. Uh, uh, I think that's that's going to be uh, obvious here. And just to say, when I was researching this story, as I'm wrapping up, I saw some uh, threads on some social media about the future of Brandon Hyde. Brandon Hyde's the guy for this team. It, the, the, the flame out at the end of the season was not due to him. It was due to some injuries. It was due to the front office not giving him enough pitching. That's not his fault. He, he puts the guys out there he's got. Um, so... Uh, if you have uh, any questions for me, any story ideas, any news tips, anything you want me to look into, please feel free to email me at chris at augustafreepress.com.